Hello, and welcome to my Tandy Radio Shack Science Fair 150 in 1 electronic project kit. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made another video on the Tandy Science Fair 201, also an electronic project lab, but this one predates the 201. This model was released in 1976 and it retailed for around $29. I picked it up at a local thrift store. Now the box itself is not in the best condition, but the items all seem to be there, it seems to be complete. And also the book which is included in the box is pretty well preserved. So with this kit you can create 150 electronic projects. And the kit includes most of your common components that you saw in the other kit as well. So we have resistors, capacitors, transistors, output transformers, speakers, LEDs, integrated circuits. Now the board did seem to lose some of its original color, probably due to its age, but it has been preserved pretty well. I've checked all of the components and everything seems to work fine. So let's get into it. So like I said, the box isn't in the best condition. I picked it up for 24 euros. It was previously sold for 14 euros at a different store. So I played a 10 euro surplus, but yeah, I'm not complaining. I think this is a great box to have. I actually bought it for a friend who's really into this type of stuff. Luckily, I get a chance to review it now. So as you can see here, we have advanced integrated circuits. We have a seven segment LED display. We can create communication circuits, test equipment. We have a meter. So yeah, it's all very exciting when looking at the box. So let's open her up and see what we have inside. The previous seller taped everything together. So that's a bit annoying to find all of this tape on the original cover, but yeah. So we start with a manual, these big books containing all of the projects. I personally think that these are like works of art. Uh, I really liked them in the previous one as well. It's nicely illustrated uh, and it's in pretty good condition actually. So yeah, really happy with this. We have the key which is used to yeah, basically bridge two contacts together. So it even has the Morse code alphabet on it, so that can probably be used to create some nice projects with that. We have this cone to cover up the uh, light sensor. We have a number of wires. And of course we have the springs to hook everything up. So let's take the kit out of the box and let's see what it looks like on the back side of the kit. When looking at the back, everything is wired up in a pretty simple way. There's really nothing much to it. So all the magic really comes from this front panel with its gorgeous colors and the springs and all of the components. Now we also have the original invoice from the original owner. So uh, I think he bought a couple of things uh, from the shop. I think it retailed around 29 uh, dollars so i'm thinking here in europe it's probably going to be around the same price so yeah we have some catalog numbers here and the box also contains some other copies of electronic projects not really related to this uh, kit but yeah he the guy was probably into electronics and commodore 64 and let's start with the book because as with the previous kit, again, this is a work of art. It's not in the best shape, but most of the pages, except for the first one, are in pretty good shape. It is multilingual, so it's both in my native tongue, Dutch, but it's also in German, French, English. It has lots of documentation, especially in the beginning, teaching you some basics of electronics, the kind of stuff that you need. Uh, it goes into the workings of a relay, how you use a multimeter, what a resistor is. So yeah, it's, it's pretty well documented. It's not necessarily the type of thing that you read as a kid, because as a kid, you just want to dive into the projects immediately. But 
Yeah, I really like learn to appreciate the whole uh, documentation that came with these types of kits. It also describes the various uh, bits and pieces that are included in the box. For example, at first I had no idea what this was for. It was only by reading the documentation that I realized that it was meant to be put on this uh, light sensor. And it just goes on and on. It's beautifully illustrated, lots of text. Uh, they really put a lot of effort into creating this. So yeah, an excellent book, both for teachers, for students, for hobbyists. A really nice piece of documentation. So this kit uses the same type of springs as the previous one did, where you hook up components together. All you need to do is take some wire and put it into this little spring to hook up the various components together. Now the board comes with stuff like switches. It has various knobs that you can turn, variable resistors. It includes radio elements to build your own radio. It has relays to drive things. And it even has a, a light bulb here that works on DC, but yeah. It's pretty cool to see this type of stuff in this uh, electronic kit. And it's always nice to see something flashing when doing your projects. It also comes with this external key, typically used to, to make contact between two wires, but you can do various Morse code projects with it as well. So as far as power sources are concerned, the kit can operate on a 9 volt battery so there is a battery clip where you can attach the 9 volt battery and there is this battery holder also to nicely put the battery in place we also have room for two AA batteries giving us a 3 volt power source and this is how it looks like when everything is kind of wired up So let's take a moment and look inside the book. Here we're going to be looking at a rapid LED display switching persistence of vision test project. Quite a mouthful. Now the idea is that you hit a key or a switch and a seven segment LED will light up very briefly uh, due to the capacitor circuit here and the transistor uh, switching on the LED segments. So we have the wiring scheme and a wiring sequence, making it pretty easy for us to follow the path of all the wires. And this is what it looks like when everything is wired up. So we hook up our external device, which is the key. And when we press it, we see the LED segment blinking very fast. Let's watch this again in slow motion. There, did you see it? Awesome. So the next project we're going to be looking at is a machine guns pulse oscillator. That sounds really cool. So I'm guessing we're going to be hearing some kind of output. So again, let's look at the wiring diagram and the wiring scheme. And let's take a look at the actual circuit. So here we see that we are going to be driving our speaker using a transformer. Again, we're using a transistor, some capacitors, some resistors, and our key to do the actual machine gun noise. So let's hook everything up. Uh, I am going to be speeding up this footage because it does take quite a while to finish this project. And you know mistakes are made and then you need to revisit the book, check all your connections again. So yeah the joys of working with the electronic project kit. But once everything is hooked up we just finish up with two external leads. And as you can see, we're using a bunch of uh, transistors here. We're using a variable resistor knob. We have all kinds of capacitors here in the circuit that we can play around with. And here we have the output transformer, which will drive our speaker. So let's see what it looks like or sounds like. So with some imagination, you definitely hear a machine gun here. And when turning the knob here, the variable resistor, we can speed up the machine gun and slow it down again. So it's actually magic. So these are the types of projects that I was really fond of as a kid. You know, as soon as something lights up or makes a sound, it makes it extra special. 
So here I'm starting another project that involves a light sensor and the output meter. I always like these analog meters in these projects, so it's always nice when they are used uh, in a project. Now you might ask yourself what's the relevance in today's age of these electronic project kits, but I think you know they just have this great look and feel to them. It's something that you know Arduinos and software can't really capture. Perhaps it's a bit of nostalgia, but just look at the box and look at the the colors and the layout. It's 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 pretty much a work of art as far as I'm concerned. So as we hook up our 9 volt battery to bring some life into our circuit, we can flip the switch, see the needle on the UV meter moving a little bit, and we can calibrate this using our variable resistor, and then we use our light sensor to see how the circuit uh, behaves when we cast a shadow on the light sensor and see the, the meter, the output meter needle moving. So yeah. And as a final project, I wanted to show you this one-shot multi-vibrator. So in this circuit, we are going to be using our key again as a switch, and it will briefly turn on a light bulb. So here we're using two power supplies. We have the 9 volt for the circuit and 3 volts for the light bulb. We have the transformer to or the relay to drive it. And it's a mono-stable multivibrator using the transistors, capacitors, and resistors to start a timing cycle where a trigger, in our case the key, will cause the circuit to move from the stable state, where the light is off, to an unstable state, where the light is on, for a particular period of time. And that time is dictated by the resistors and the capacitors used in the circuit. But as a kid, you're not interested in all that stuff. So you just look at the wiring scheme and you start with your project. Well, I have fond memories uh, as a kid doing this type of stuff, not really knowing what the circuits did because, I mean, it was a lot of text to read as a young kid and it was just nice to just wire everything up and seeing how it would behave as soon as you flip the switch and hook up a battery. So we're finishing up the project here, just a few connections left to go. And then we'll see something lighting up, hopefully. So it's very easy to make mistakes when doing projects like that. When we hit the key, we see that our light bulb lights up very briefly and then turns off immediately. Let's see that one more time. When we hit the switch, it lights up and then shuts down. Now, today people that are into electronics typically use these types of breadboards where they still need to find components to put them on. But of course, with the coming of age of Arduinos, a lot of stuff is being done on software now using the Atmel microprocessor. And with these type of expansion cards, it becomes very easy to extend the functionality of the Arduino. Now today there are lots of different types of development boards to choose from as a lot of people have followed the uh, the path that Arduino has laid out so we see a lot of a lot of the times smaller development boards with integrated Wi-Fi Bluetooth so lots of connectivity options. And these can also be attached to kind of breadboards to add components. And in addition to that, it has become it has become very cheap to buy all kinds of sensors to hook up to your electronic projects. So in that sense, products like electronic project kits have become a bit obsolete, but you cannot ignore the beautiful packaging and the excellent documentation and look and feel of these projects. So I guess this kind of wraps it up. I'm really excited to have found this at the thrift store. I'm even more excited that I'm going to be able to give it to somebody who really appreciates this type of stuff. I also love the Tandy Electronic Project Kit 201, but the older 151 has this really old school look and feel to it. It's really, it breathes like 1970s. And I think it's a really cool box, a cool manual, great addition to the collection for people who are into this kind of stuff.
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, I always appreciate a like or a subscribe. Hit the notification button if you want to be notified of new videos to come. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.